Does masturbation get riskier as you age? Is there a safe number for older men, or is that just a myth? Patients ask me this constantly, and the truth isn't what most people expect. Stay with me, because the final point is the one most men, and even some doctors, tend to overlook. I'm Dr. Zara, a urologist with over 15 years of clinical experience. My job here is to guide you with clear, authentic information you can trust and apply in your own life. Let's start with the biggest worry, prostate cancer. Some men fear that frequent masturbation or ejaculation somehow wears out the prostate or increases risk. That idea has no basis in medical science. In fact, the largest studies suggest the opposite. The best known is the health professional's follow-up study out of Harvard, published in JAMA and later in European Urology. It tracked tens of thousands of men for years. The researchers found that men who ejaculated more frequently, roughly in the most days of the month range, had a noticeably lower chance of being diagnosed with prostate cancer, later compared with men who ejaculated rarely. This doesn't prove causation, but the signal has been consistent across large populations. In plain English, frequent ejaculation does not damage the prostate. If anything, it may help reduce long-term cancer risk. Why might that be? Think of the prostate as a factory that produces fluid. Regular emptying may reduce the time waste products and potentially harmful substances sit in the ducts. Some theories also point to hormonal balance and local immune activity. These are working explanations, but they fit with what large epidemiologic studies like the Harvard cohort have repeatedly observed. Now, what about BPH benign prostate enlargement and night urination? This is where myths swirl online. The American Urological Association is clear in its guidelines. Age, hormone changes, bladder behavior, and lifestyle factors are the main drivers. Ejaculation frequency is not listed as a cause of prostate growth. Studies that look specifically at this question show mixed results. Some hint that more regular ejaculation might ease urinary symptoms, but many show no strong connection. The safest interpretation is this. Masturbation neither prevents nor causes prostate enlargement. For most men, it's neutral. Here's the part most seniors don't expect. In men with chronic pelvic pain syndrome, sometimes called non-bacterial prostatitis, long gaps without ejaculation can actually make the sense of pelvic heaviness or congestion worse. Clinical reports, including discussions in Campbell Walshwein urology, Note that regular ejaculation often reduces that pressure for some patients. It's not a cure, but it can be one tool to manage symptoms. If you notice pelvic discomfort that improves after ejaculation and worsens with long abstinence, that's an important clue to bring up with your doctor. So how often is safe? There is no universal number that fits every man. Instead, I recommend thinking in three guardrails. First, comfort. If you're not sore, irritated, or noticing blood, your frequency is probably fine. Second, recovery. If you do feel soreness or see irritation, adjust technique, use better lubrication, and take a short break. The tissues usually recover quickly. Third, red flags. Blood that keeps returning, fever or chills with painful urination, new pelvic or back pain, these are not normal aging. They need proper evaluation. Let's expand the lens beyond the prostate. Hormones and erections matter too. After 50, testosterone levels decline gradually. This affects desire, energy, and sometimes recovery after sex or masturbation. The mistake many men make is assuming every change is low T. In reality, sleep quality, weight, medications, and stress all play huge roles. So if your frequency drops but you feel otherwise well, that may be normal aging. If you notice fatigue, loss of muscle, or persistent erectile changes, that's when checking testosterone is useful. Another overlooked factor is the brain. Very intense, high-novelty pornography can desensitize arousal pathways, especially in older men. You may notice you need more and more stimulation to feel anything, while real-life sensation feels blunted. This is not prostate damage, it's a training effect in the nervous system. The fix is usually a few weeks of reducing intensity, focusing on more natural stimulation, and letting your sensitivity reset.
Let's tie it together with a practical framework. If you're comfortable, not sore, and your mood and energy feel steady, your frequency is likely healthy. If you notice irritation or worsening symptoms, dial down, adjust, and recover. If pelvic pain improves with ejaculation, a steady rhythm may help, and if any of the warning signs appear, don't self-treat in the dark get checked. So, how often should older men masturbate? The safe answer is, as often as feels comfortable while respecting your body's signals. There is no magic number, and the best research, including Harvard's large cohort studies in JAMA and European Urology, suggests that regular ejaculation is safe, neutral for enlargement, and possibly protective against cancer. If this video was helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. It really helps more men find trustworthy health information. And tell me in the comments, what's one men's health question you want me to tackle next?